I'm David from Levika Photography and today we are re revisiting macro and it's been a while. So I'm looking at a couple of different lenses today but technically I think we can call this Extreme Macro 3. Uh, so in Macro 2, Extreme Macro 2, I did that a couple of years ago and uh, you know there's a few things that I said in that video that were completely wrong and I totally admit it. One thing I was calling focus stacking, follow focusing, I don't know why, sometimes I'm just dyslexic like that, have a tendency to just replace words with other words. One thing I did say in that video that I also got completely wrong, and this is totally my fault, was that all macro lenses are flat field, and that just is not true. Um, what I meant to say is that all macro lenses have almost no barrel distortion. There are a few flat field lenses out there but they are literally labeled flat field. Uh, one that's legendary is the Vivitar Series 1 90 to 180 flat field lens. But the rest of macro lenses really don't have much barrel distortion. They try to get the least amount distortion as possible. Today we're going to look at one particular favorite that I have been eyeing for a long time and uh, this is the MPE 65mm from Canon and this thing has a five times magnification. You know and the funny thing is if you're trying to like take a picture of somebody's eye they'll be like I feel like I'm in a basketball locker room. Get that thing out of my face. But anyway, uh, this thing is actually very smooth, really well designed. Um, I don't think it's weather sealed, but it looks close. And then I came across this the other day. This is the world's cheapest Leica lens. Uh, this is the Leica R 100mm f4 macro, and this one is actually 1 to 2, so it's kind of a weak macro. But one thing I've always liked about this lens is that even though it comes with bellows, and this is how you focus this lens, there's no focus up here, you only have your f-stops, um, just so you can see a little closer. And this is the Elmar 100mm uh, f4. This lens actually goes, when it's all the way backed out, to infinity. And that's very rare for a bellows lens. The other thing that's really nice about this is it has its own micro focusing rail. And I use these all the time on my tripod at the other studio, and I completely forgot to bring that with me today. So I'm just going to have to find a way to get around it. But anyway, uh, the other one I have is my old trusty 55 millimeter micro and then I've got my Nikon bellows just to see how close we can get to this and this one does actually have a reverse adapter on it so what a reverse adapter means is that the lens mount goes in here and then there's threads these are 52 millimeter threads so that allows you to mount your lens backwards this particular test for this one uh, we're going to do on micro four thirds uh, simply because I don't have an adapter for this one but that will also let us know how well micro four thirds works for macro. What I'm shooting today is a ten dollar bill. Now it, that doesn't look exciting but my focus is I don't know what that sculpture is in the photo. So I want to see what that actually looks like. So that's what we're going to be checking out today. Okay, for this particular test, we are going to shoot with the uh, the Leica R, and I've mounted this to a Canon 5D Mark II. I used to be a hardcore Canon shooter years and years and years ago. The 5D Mark II was pretty much the last camera that I used from Canon before I switched over to Nikon. Anyway, I've always used Nikon lenses and Leica R lenses instead of Canon lenses because they're just sharper. They do make mounts for Nikon for Canon that actually go to infinity, so that is like one of the beauties of Canon mounts is they're pretty much universal. Uh, you can mount just about everything to them except for mirrorless uh, lenses. 2x magnification or actually one to two magnification this does not get very close. So right now we're at one second at ISO 100 and I've got mirror lockup enabled. So I'm going to go ahead and take our picture. Alright so there you have it. That's what it looks like at f8. Now I'm going to go ahead 
and step it down to F16. And notice our angle of attack here is somewhere probably around, oh, I don't know, maybe 60 degrees open. A little bit more than 45. I'm going to say it's 60. And for this shot, we need to go a longer exposure, F16, zoomed all the way in at, uh, we're going to have to go with 3.2 seconds. Now the other thing I wanted to say about this lens is that uh, it has another unique feature to it that's actually kind of cool and I don't know why nobody else saw this before but since this lens actually focuses at infinity uh, using the focus rails for video is actually quite nice so you know right here is a, is a clip that I shot with this lens on the OMD EM1 Mark II of some birds hanging out and you can see that it pulls focus nicely so you know really actually kind of cool for that Uh, unfortunately, for a macro lens, it just isn't all that great. Uh, and the bokeh is terrible. I mean, terrible bokeh. This little sculpture right here, just to show you what the bokeh looks like, and we'll purposely zoom in. I'm going to open the lens all the way up, just because that's how we would shoot with it out in the field if we were really trying to do something with it. It is actually the cheapest Leica R lens you can buy. These run about 300 bucks used, obviously. This particular lens is from 1968. Okay, next up we've got the Canon MPE 65mm f2.8. They still sell this lens new. This lens still goes for 1200 bucks. This lens was actually introduced in 1999. The problem with this lens is, do you see this distance that I have right here? This is the farthest away that this lens can actually focus from something. So this is a true kind of microscope, microscope style lens. It also has an extremely shallow depth of field. And it opens up at 2.8. But 2.8 is like way too shallow. So we're going to go ahead and crank this up. We are going to put this at F4 to match the other one. And I just want you to see that obviously this is magnified a lot more. Now at f4, this is running at um, one fourth of a second. So, you know, pretty slow shutter speed. Now, the crazy thing is, let's go ahead and try to zoom in on this and see what we get. And this is where it becomes tricky to use because you zoom in and then it becomes in focus again as you're zooming in. And immediately, what you're going to see between these two shots is they're shot at the same setting. This one's darker the more you zoom in on your magnification the more light loss you suffer from and so in this case we're going to have to give it some light and we've got this little LED light right here okay I'll take the same shot again now this lens happens to be perfectly sharp at f16 which is nice uh, it doesn't really suffer from diffraction the way other uh, macro lenses do. Five seconds. So you can see it's almost in focus. And this is the main issue that I have with this lens. It's like at this setting, uh, we can't get forward and back in focus. That means you have to focus the back, shoot, focus the middle, shoot, and now focus forward, shoot. This particular a lens at 2x magnification takes five images stacked together to be able to get one shot in focus. I'm a production t photographer. I've been doing this for 20 years now. I can't, can't even do that. So, you know, I don't have time to stack images. Uh, most of my work is done for clients that need really fast turnaround times. So I need to be able to get it right in the camera. I can't do it here. So this is kind of where this lens 
uh, falls off from my workflow. I just I won't ever be able to use it like that. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and pull it back a hair just so we can zoom in some more. Okay, so right now I'm zooming the head all the way in to the 10. You can see what a joy this thing is to focus. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, so now in order to take the correct exposure here, uh, it looks like I am going to be at 20 seconds at f16. Now keep in mind we're shooting paper. So we're fairly flat. Now our angle here is only, God, maybe eight and a half, nine degrees. We're barely getting this image in focus. And let's go ahead and shoot these. And let me show you what this looks like. All right, so let's go ahead and take a picture here. Now this is F16 and uh, we are at still 5X magnification five times. But it still renders a really nice image. And this thing does have excellent bokeh for the areas that are out of focus. So, you know, I can't really complain about that too much. Now let's get four inches away here and see what that looks like. So this is zoomed all the way out at one times and at f16. And let's see what that looks like. And this lens does actually have kind of a swirly bokeh to it. And uh, right now we are shooting at 10 seconds at f16, which is a really long time for something like that. So the light transmission of this lens is nowhere close to the actual f-stop that it talks about. Um, way, way, way slower. So if you want to shoot any portraits of bugs' faces, they got to be dead because if they're wiggling around, you will never get anything with this. Uh, yeah, just not easy to shoot. I'm going to take this same image at f4. On the 5D Mark II, I cannot change my f-stop when I'm all the way magnified in. Actually, anything over two times. It just won't allow me to change my f-stop. Uh, with the back roll dial. I can go into the menu and do it, but not use the back roll dial. When I'm zoomed all the way out to 1x magnification, uh, then it allows me to do everything. So very, very strange. So there you have it. That is the MPE-65. Okay, last but not least is my 55mm uh, micro reverse mounted on Nikon bellows with a Nikon to Micro Four Thirds adapter using the EM1 Mark II to shoot this. Now before you guys go crazy on me about saying Nikon, I just can't say Nikon. I just can't. Any camera store that you go into in the US, everybody there says Nikon. The reps say Nikon. So I know in Japan and in Australia you guys say Nikon. Anyway, let me dive into this here. So here, I've already got this focused in, and you can see how close we are. We're very similar to the uh, EMP65, uh, and with this lens reverse mounted, focused all the way out, I moved the object to where I could tell it was in focus, and I set it at f4. So this is our shot right now. Uh, I believe this is around 10 seconds because we do have a little bit of a light fall off going down here and this is the same magnification but we're shooting AP or we're shooting micro four thirds so we're actually cropping in a little bit and that actually looks pretty good and this lens actually has very nice bokeh when you look at it and these are old lenses too these are from the 60s so let me stop all the way down to f16, so that's f32, that's f22, that is f16. So we're looking at a 15 second exposure. Okay. 
that does mean that it's still faster than the uh, Canon. Uh, the Canon's light loss through that lens is just massive. I'll back this out as far as I can and leave it reverse mounted and we'll come into infinity here and that should give us a well increased depth of field. Let me step this down to f4, take a shot there. Now do the same shot at f16. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and do the bill. So at the same setting, okay, so this one's at f4. Focus a little bit more on his head. And you can see it shares almost the same shallow depth of field as that lens. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> bring this all the way down to f16. We're going to add a little bit of light here. And this is 15 seconds again. So still faster than the Canon. And now we will do maximum magnification on here. So that means we are actually going to zoom this lens all the way in. And the crazy thing is we can actually do this one at just a slight little bit more angle. Right here is at F4. And you know this angle, looking at it right now, it's about probably 15 degrees up. Remember on the Canon we were at 8. That actually looks pretty good and this is at f4 so now we're going to go ahead and stop this all the way down and bring it back. One, two, three. That should be at f16. Yep. Now the beauty of this setup is I can also do a, an 80 megapixel RAW or a 50 megapixel JPEG. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now the funny thing is, this is my setup that I use all the time. Uh, with this lens, I'm not exactly over enthused about it. So just to give you an idea of how slow this is on high res, I'm going to do my exit uh, while this is actually shooting. So anyway, the Canon MPE uh, 65 millimeter. I do recommend this lens, it, but it has a very shallow depth of field and you can only get four inches or closer to your subject. Therefore, you have a hard time creating full depth of field if you want to get everything in focus. But if you're good at focus stacking and you want a really sharp lens, this is a great way to go. And I believe it's dust sealed. It's not weather sealed, but I believe it's dust sealed, so that helps a little bit. Uh, the Leica 100mm f4, this thing uh, is cool because it's the only bellows lens that I've ever seen for full frame 35 millimeter that focuses at infinity. Uh, typically when you add bellows like this then you're stuck at like six inches away. So this one does infinity. Unfortunately at f4 the bokeh is crap. So that's a major bummer. But at f8 through f16 this is actually a very decent macro lens to use. And I like the fact that they put a micro adjustment rail in here on the bottom so that actually works. Now the nice thing about this lens is if you go out and buy it you can use other like our lenses on the bellows. It doesn't have to be this one all the time so that is a bonus and like I said it is the cheapest uh, Leica R lens out there. You can pick these up for anywhere from um, probably 150 bucks for just the lens or on the bellows about 250 so really pretty reasonable. But this is an antique, 1968. Luckily, this one has very minimal internal dust, no fungus or haze or anything like that. So this is my favorite setup. We can go both ways with it. And that's the thing I really like. Um, magnification this way gives us the same 5 to 1, but we're cropping in on micro four thirds, so we're getting more like 6 to 1, which is actually a little bit better. This has more depth of field than the Canon 65mm uh, MPE. So that's where we get a benefit there as well. And on top of that, because of the camera body I'm using, I'm able to use high res mode. And uh, so we can actually get a little bit more detail out of it. So here's this photo finally done. So anyway, this thing works great reversed or forward. 
and it has huge magnification benefits. So anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Uh, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. The links for all this stuff will be in the description. And uh, other than that, uh, subscribe to my channel for more information like this. And you guys have a good day. We'll see ya.